Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Murph. I'm here to give you some early to mid game free to play Marvel Strike Force comment. And today we're going to talk about our build strategy for while we build our teams. The last couple of days, I've been spending time making videos about the current meta, what that means to new and, and mid game players that are trying to actually pursue Apocalypse and the entire Horseman Saga meta, and how we get there. Yesterday, we covered our farming priority between both the campaign nodes and the store and today we're going to actually go through building these specific teams what kind of our 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 limit is as far as how deep we're willing to build these characters and teams because it, as you're going to see it, there, there's going to be a gear crunch coming down the road if you're not there already yet and a lot of these teams require the same gear due to their traits and some of them are just more important than others even though they may be further down the road so without much further ado let's get into it First thing, we're looking at my roster right now on my level 68, actually 69 account. I just hit 69 today. Um, I'm currently sitting at about 1.4 mil TCP, and I've been building this account based off of my own opinions and, and the information I'm putting out the last few days. So we're going to go into our saved roster here, our saved squads rather. And you're going to see, so the first group of teams we're going to be covering here is part of our first priority that we looked at yesterday, right? So if we're looking at... The meta and the way that we're looking at it, we're looking at this first tier of characters here. These are mainly going to be your Scourge teams that you're going to use to unlock your actual horsemen during these Scourge events. So, as you can see, I've started building that way from the early get-go. So your first team here is going to be Web Warriors. We've built them up uh, to max. We're still level 69. I haven't started leveling these characters up to 69 yet, but as you can see... All their gears max. I'm just waiting to level up and unlock those actual gear slots to be able to put them on. Now, my target for my Scourge teams is about gear 14 is where I would stop absolutely. You typically need to hit gear 5 with maybe some additional Scourges to unlock the, the Horseman characters during their events the first go around, which really should be our goal here for the next two Horsemen. And that difficulty 5, it's recommended that you have gear level 13 characters. Now, I will tell you that since we're low-level accounts and our rosters aren't going to be that built out, you've got to have, like, no fat on your roster, and you've got to have all of your T4s and everything invested in, in your characters if you want to clear that gear 13. Really, that gear 13 is almost like a minimum required, like, entry level to even compete in those. I would recommend getting the gear 14 just to play it safe. So that is the end goal for our Scourge teams. Gear level 14, write that down. You don't have to hit 14 on every single character, but sometimes some of these teams have key characters that it would help you to have them at level four or gear level 14. So next up, we've got our Young Avengers. This is going to be for our second Scourge, the Famine event for Rogue. As you can see, I've only got four of the the main characters unlocked for them. Kate Bishop, we got lucky with some orb pulls. We still haven't unlocked Echo yet, so Miles Morales is just sitting here as a filler for the team. But once you unlock Echo, you can replace Miles with Echo. Next up, we've got the Heroes Guardians for our third upcoming Scourge, the, the War Scourge featuring Red Hulk and the Gamma team. So I was lucky enough to unlock all these characters at, at a, a fairly high uh, star level as the events went on. So I've built them up and still working on kind of maxing all of them. Heimdall's on his way up as well as Valkyrie still. And yeah, they're, they're, they're great fun to use in a war. Again, Gear 14 is going to be our aim for this. Our fourth and final main team is going to be your Bionic Avengers, which we don't have all the characters released yet. In fact, the only two characters available at the recording of this video are Iron Man and Vision. They both recently got reworked. I will be investing in them shortly. I just haven't had the time or resources due to my own budget to put into them yet. I have plenty of stuff in reserve, but I'm being fairly cautious. I will be going over my resources guide, how to manage your resources in an upcoming video in the next week or so. So look out for that. However... I haven't invested in them yet. I will soon. Viv Vision is scheduled to come out. I believe next week is when our Hero campaign will start. We've also got a video coming out for that probably tomorrow. And once we finish up with our Scourge teams at Gear 14, the next thing we want to start looking towards is our Raid teams in order to start gearing up for the Doom Raid meta because the the late Ultimus Raids and the Doom Raids is where you're going to be getting the majority of your gear and resources to bring those gear tiers up and to invest your ability materials in these teams. So 
Luckily, we've already got two of these teams covered in these first four teams we started building. One of the biggest parts about trying to pursue this meta as a young player in this game is you really don't want to have a whole lot of fat on your roster. You want to have a very trim, very select roster of characters you've invested into that will pay off in multiple different game modes simultaneously. So if we go back to the top here, we've got our Web Warriors. This is our Bio Raid team, which means that if we invest in this for Scourges, it's going to help us out in raids. So I would highly recommend this be the first team you build because it will both help you with the Morgan Le Fay, the Pestilence Scourge unlock, and it will also help you out pushing raids. Don't be a sandbagger. Help your alliance out. All right, guys? Now, after Bio, the next raid team that we really want to focus on once we unlock these characters throughout this month is going to be your tech raid team, your Bionic Avengers. And the reason for this is because, again, just like Web Warriors, they're also a required team for an upcoming scourge for the death scourge that the only information we have so far is that this team is required for it so that's your second team your third raid team is going to be your mystic raid team now i haven't invested in them yet because i've been focusing on my scourges and i have my web warriors and I'm, we're only doing ultimate 7.5 in my alliance so really i don't have to start investing in other raid teams yet but i've put characters i've unlocked in this account into the appropriate slots for these raid teams just so you can kind of see like an idea of what we're looking at at these levels now, with the rest of your Mystic Raid team, you can start looking at Eternals if you have them unlocked. You could run them out with, obviously I don't have Dagger here, but all your new Warriors as well. Those are kind of the meta characters for your, your Mystic Raid team. Next up, we're going to have our Astonishing X-Men for the Mutant Raid team. Now, I don't have Jubilee yet because I really haven't built my Pym Tech for that event, even though it's coming out, I think, tonight. And in addition to that, we're also missing Bishop. So, I haven't invested too heavily in this this team yet. I think I invested in Beast just for the the previous heroic campaign for Valkyrie, and that's the only reason why he's up as high as he is right now. The next raid team we're going to look at is going to be our Secret Avengers for our skill raid team. Now I've got Shang-Chi on here as well. I really haven't invested too much in this team yet. They're kind of on my back burner right now of just starting to actually level this team up as the rest of my teams are pretty close to max level for my account. So with just spare resources, I'm investing in them on the side when I can. And with these raid teams, so we've got our skill team, our mutant team, our mystic team, our tech team, and then our bio team. What we want to look at is we want to be looking at gear 14 to 15, right? Now, that, that cutoff level will depend on what type of content your alliance is clearing. But seeing as two of these teams, you already have to get to gear 14 anyways, per my recommendations for the Scourges. Gear 14 is a good starting off point with them. And then once your alliance starts pushing into Doom Raids or other content, you can start looking at potentially investing into gear 15. Um, I know it's going to be especially difficult with your Mystic Raid team because there are a lot of meta characters that are going to require that Mystic gear. And with Web Warriors, Gamma teams coming out, they're also going to be Bio, which means they're going to start eating into that Bio gear, which we're going to cover in a little bit in this video, kind of the... The, the way to strategize gearing out these teams so you're not gearing up multiple characters at the same time with overlapping requirements. But anyways, to summarize as far, gear 14 for your Scourge teams, gear 14 to 15 for your Raid teams. Next up, we're going to be looking at our Horseman teams, and I'll show you what I've unlocked so far. Now for Darkhold, this account wasn't around when Darkhold came out, so I actually lucked out with some premium board pulls for Doctor Strange Heartless. We still don't have Agatha yet, we still do not have Wong yet, and the last go-around for Morgan Le Fay, in the Pestilence events, we were able to actually get her to 85 out of 100 charge for the unlock, so we will get her next time around. But you can see I've invested in Doctor Strange Heartless already. I'm starting to just slowly level up Scarlet Witch, and, and I'm really not going on my way to farm, you know, those random couple pieces that are hard to come by in, like, the green gear level. So, I'm just kind of waiting on those pop-up in the store. I'll purchase them and get her up as we go. Next up, we've got our Unlimited X-Men team. I built Gambit up for the Gambit raid specifically, and he also helped me out during the, the last Heroic event for Valkyrie on this account. So we got him built up already. The rest of them I haven't invested in yet, but I, I will eventually. Again, these are second tier in our priority list for building teams because these characters are all going to be required for the Apocalypse event, but we can't even do the Sagas until we're level 90. Well... We can't finish out the sagas to our level 90, right? We can't even start them to our level 80. That's a ways out. We have time to build them. Next up, I've got Hulk here. I know it's the only one I've got on this list. He's the only one available aside from She-Hulk at this current moment. Uh, again, I've invested minimally in him. But for all of these horsemen teams here, 
these four teams are going to be required well three teams the fourth team hasn't come out yet or been announced but these three teams plus the fourth one in the future will be required you have them at gear 15 as a minimum entry level for apocalypse and gear 17 in order to finally complete him so now that we've talked about the teams that we're looking at building right now we're going to talk about kind of this whole gear trait debacle that i alluded to a few minutes ago so we're going to pull up our spreadsheet again here we've got our character build priority sheet so i've gone through and basically every single character in the game almost i think actually every character in the game i've ranked them per their their origin trait so bio mutant mystic and skill and tech and arrange them in kind of the priority building order for these these tiers so one thing to look at here we'll start with bio let's get over here so with bio our first tier is going to be that war horseman team with red hulk hulk she hulk abomination and brawn now obviously most of these characters are not available yet so you don't have to build them but what i would look at is i would start looking at this second tier here so i would start looking at this second tier here for your web warriors right so we got spider-man spider-punk scarlet spider miles morales and ghost spider now if you're paying attention you'll notice that all five of these characters are all on the same team they're all in the same scourge team they're all in the same raid team so while that's awesome that it's easy to build these characters and be able to have that payoff in both raid and in your scourges the problem is that they're all bio characters. They all require the same gear. In fact, four out of the five all are brawler characters, which affects your ISO 8, which we'll kind of get into after this. But what that means is it's going to be difficult to build all five of these characters up simultaneously quickly. That is what made me create this tier list. So what I do personally when I build characters is I pick one character from each list. I pick a bio character, a mutant character, a mystic character, a skill character, and a tech character. I have them all favorited, and I build one from each origin trait at a time. So at my current state of my account, gold and training credits are not an issue. I can level characters up whenever I want. I, I, I'm fairly frugal with that currency in order to maintain reserves for emergencies, but essentially, in order to prevent myself from hitting an actual gear choke point, with trying to build up all bio characters at the same time, I'm just going through and building one of each at the same time, right? So for instance, right now, I'm working on maxing out my web warriors. So they're all maxed out for my level right now, but let's say for instance, I'm trying to build out Ghost Spider, right? So I would focus on Ghost Spider for my bios. Then I would go to my mutant gear tier here and start building, I don't know. If you look at these characters, none of them are actually required for any of your Scourge unlocks. So you can just go straight to building unlimited X-Men on this list or your weapon X if, if Omega Red's close up uh, or your astonishing X-Men if you want to build your raid team. So pick, pick, pick a goal with that and pursue that, right? So we already know that Bio is going to be locked up farming for our raid team for quite a while, which is also going to make farming Squirrel Girl and where is she? There she is, Miss Marvel, right, for our other Scourge team. So we've got seven total characters for our Scourges all from Bio. Bio's going to take a minute, just be patient and stick with it. Mutant is a little more flexible, what you want to build on earlier on. But to quickly go through this tier list, we've got our Famine Horsemen, our Unlimited X-Men team in our first tier for Mutants. We've got our Weapon X in the second tier for Mutants. And honestly, this Astonishing X-Men group should be second tier, tied with Weapon X. You just kind of pick your poison, which one you want to start building earlier on. And then after that, we've got everything from, from your X-Force teams to your X-Factor teams to just strong plug and play characters. And I'm not going to get into too depth on or I'm not going to go too in depth on characters lower down on this list. Next up, we can talk about our mystic priority. Now, this one is going to get very very congested. So, on one hand, this is really the only one we have that has both scourge teams and your horseman teams both available currently. So, you're going to be in kind of a a debacle on which one you want to build first. I would recommend building your heroes guardians first because that that war scourge is coming. They haven't announced it yet, but it's going to come, and you do not want to be panic building these characters, wasting all your materials at the last minute trying to get ready for it. So start building them now. Now, in addition to your Hero as Guardians, you've also got your Eternals. If you've got them unlocked, I know we're talking free-to-play right now, so pray to RNG Jesus. Hopefully you guys have them unlocked. If you don't, you're in the same boat as me, and good luck to you. Keep throwing those orbs. Next up, on, or really at the top of the list, we've got our War Horseman team, which the, the entire team is Mystic. 
that sucks which means you're gonna hit the same gear chokehold with the, the, this horseman team as you will with your bio raid team so start picking out what you want to farm first do one at a time and then just go from there again with tech sorry with skill now this is going to be a little interesting so you have a lot more flexibility with skill because there are not a whole lot of meta skill characters and there aren't a whole lot of skill characters period compared to the rest of the trace but first off first and priority in my opinion we've got echo if you get her unlocked for your young avengers team build her we've also got casserole up here because she's just a very strong character for your doom raids for the skill team and then we've got our secret avengers for your omega red unlock and your doom raids as well these other two characters I would put up here the same level as Echo, Valkyrie, and Sif. They're two heroes, guardians that require skill gear. And it's kind of nice with this team, you can actually build three Mystic and two skill. So it's not all five characters for one Scourge event that are requiring the same gear traits, you know, the same way that Web Warriors is. Now, if we scroll down here to our tech rate or our, our tech build order, we've got Kate Bishop. She is one of the Young Avengers. She's the only one on that team required, so that's going to be a very easy gear. However, you know, so look at that that tech raid team coming out. Just like Web Warriors, you've got five tech characters all in the same Scourge, all in the same raid team. So I would highly recommend you start gearing Kate Bishop, Iron Man, and Vision now while you're able to before you start hitting that crunch with all the rest of these characters, right? So that kind of covers each of these individual traits and kind of what to look at early on here focus on your scourge teams first and your raid teams build your horsemen eventually and just be wary that these characters pull from the same gear pools so the earlier you start the earlier you're going to get through those choke points and if you just stay focused on one character at a time those choke points are going to be a lot easier to get through now something i alluded to earlier in the video a few minutes ago was talking about our actual traits as it pertains to our ISO 8. Now, if I go back to my roster here, and we pull up Brawlers, for instance, all of these characters all require the same ISO, right? So he's a Brawler character. Let's go into his ISO. Yeah, you can see he requires Brawler, right? So that goes based off of that type of trait. Your role trait, Brawler. That means all Brawler characters all require the same ISO. So building multiple Brawlers at the same time is going to be very similar to building multiple Bio characters at the same time, where they all take the same resources. This is going to be a pain in the neck because, as you can see, Scourge Team, Scourge Team, Scourge Team, Scourge Team, Scourge Team, Scourge Team, right? we got a lot of overlap here. And Scourge Team as well, Miss Marvel. So, again, pick one character from each of these role traits. One Brawler, one Blaster, one Controller, one Support, one Protector, and build them all one at a time. So on, on both of my main accounts, the way I usually do it is I have one character from each Origin trait, Bio, Tech, Skill, Mystic, and Mutant, all favorited, that I'm focusing on leveling up and gearing one at a time in each of those traits so I do not hit a choke point. For each Roll trait, I have one favorited. One Blaster, one Brawler, one Controller, one Protector, one Support. Each of those I'm individually building, and that way I'm not hitting multiple at the same time and hitting a, a, a choke point. Choke points will kill you in this game, and they're always going to be here, so it's up to you to play smart and invest in the right characters at the right time so that you can continually progress your account and not hit any sort of choke points or narrow holding patterns. I don't know. I don't know what the hell I just said. I'm losing my mind. I just got off work. I'm tired. But anyways, I hope this video was informative for you. And if you've been sticking around this long in the video, thank you. I'm an idiot. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about half the time, but I feel like this is making sense for, for newer to mid game players in a free to play aspect. It's covering content that other people aren't create or aren't really covering. And that's what I want to do. I want to give you the advice that other people either aren't or might not be able to give you because they don't have that perspective. So Thank you guys for sticking around. Um, coming up tomorrow, we're going to have a video covering the Iron Wild event that will be coming out next week for the Viv Vision Unlock, as well as kind of a all-encompassing inf info brief about the August events as a whole as it pertains to Deathlock and this Bionic Avengers raid team. So stick around. I'll see you guys tomorrow, hopefully. Thank you guys for watching. Stay safe. Have a good night.